Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Good to see you all, man. Yeah. Uh, got a nice warm ball on a very cold day. Yeah. Um, so, for the start, start of the year, I wanted to recap some of the basics, and then we've also got. So it'll be a recap for some of you, um, but for some of you it'll be new because we've got quite a few new students joining us, or have joined us in the last, few, last month or two. Um, so I thought I'd start off with oils, um, which is the medium that I already started with um, 50 years ago. I got a little set of oils when I was a kid, and that was the start of it all really. Um, I've, and because I've always used oils, that's always been the first, that was like the first paint, the first kind of proper paint I ever had. And um, that's the one I'm the most familiar with and the one I find a bit the easiest in a way. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a four week course on the basics of oils. Um, so to start with today, I thought I'd show a little bit of tonal painting. Um, so that's an example of basically paint, do a little painting just using brown and white for that one. Um, and it's also, you could also use it as underpainting. So this was the demo from last Thursday. So this one I just used blue and brown. So just using light and dark really. Haven't used any white in that, I've just used the white canvas. Um, I think when, when you've seen me do demos before, I've usually stained the canvas or had the canvas pre uh, the board, as it were, pre-coloured. But I thought most of you are going to start out with a white canvas or white board, something like that. So I thought, well, I'll start with, I know some of you don't, which is great, um, but I know for a lot of people, if you go and buy something from the shop, it will come out white. So I thought I'll start where you will like to start. Um, so just going to talk a little bit about oils today and the different kinds of oil paints you can get. Um, and then, so that would be the, the start of it, and I'll talk quite a lot about materials over the next few weeks. Um, but I don't want to give you, you know, do too much in one head. Um, just start with you off with what you're going to need for today. So, what I use are traditional oil paints. Um, so most of my work, I'm, I mostly work outside, and I find these work really well outside. Um, you need some solvents. Most people use solvents. You can just about get away without solvents with these, but I've never really tried it myself. I've always used a solvent to thin the paint or to wash my brushes. Um, and because I'm outside a lot, you don't get the smell really with the solvents. So, no, these are traditional ones. Yeah. So they're traditional paint. So that's what I thought I'd demonstrate today. Um, but what I have been demonstrating, you know, for most of the course, are these these kind of paints, which are water solid oil. So these, these ones. So is that that's what you've got? Yeah, good. Yeah. So these, I mean the water soluble ones, I think are fantastic in this sort of environment because you don't get the smell of solvents. Um, you can wash your brushes out in just you know just in the sink. So Sorry, Paul, what are those ones? So these are water mixable. So they're still oil paints. Um, so basically an oil oil paint, all, all it is is You've got like your, your dried colour, your pigment, which just looks like powder paint. If you remember powder paint from school, dead paint from school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like that. And then it's stuck together with linseed oil, which is really vegetable oil from linseeds. Um, I mean, so there are other oils that, you know, sometimes artists use, but linseed oil is the oil that's mostly used. So it's just like a vegetable oil. It's not got bad smell. Um, and then, I don't know when, when these ones came on the market, maybe 20 odd years ago, something like that, maybe 25, 30 years. Um, traditionally, with the, with the traditional oils, you needed a solvent to thin the paint, or some oil to thin the paint. Um, and then they modified the linseed oil so that you could wash your brushes out with water, and you could also thin the paint with water. So these are the water mixed ones. So they are distinct from each other. Um, and they're all quite different from acrylics. You can't mix them with acrylics, you can't mix them with watercolours, they're, they're different. Um, but these, you know, these are a, a, maybe a, a newer kind of oil paint. Um, I find that they, they're both quite nice to use. Um, I find that the, the water mixable ones, um, the most common brand are these Artisan. 
Um, mine are really now quite old, and I find that the water mixer ones go a little bit stiff in the tube when they get older. Um, the traditional ones do a little bit, but nowhere near as much as these do. So if you're buying these, I've got to buy a tube, maybe that size or slightly smaller, won't get much smaller, um, and then you know use it. You can get really big tubes, which is what those started out as, but to be honest, <laughs> that's taken me about 10 years to use that. Um, um, and yeah, I would just stick with this size. I've got sort of economy drive, I can get more pay, but unless you're working massive, it's not really worth it. Yeah, just, so the, these are quite good to, to get. Um, Winsor & Newton Artisan, Dale around, they also do their make, and there's also a make called Grit, um, what's the other one? Um, I've got that one, I'm going to it, that one. Cobra, that's the other make, Cobra. So um, there's, a, there's a few makes of these. Um, and as I say, some of them just, I've always found that the Windsor and Newton ones sort of went a little bit stiff in the tube. But, um, you know, they, they are they are quite nice to use. So that's that. If you want something, that's in a way, they're a little bit more expensive, but they're easier in terms of not having to bother with solvents. Um, you know, washing up is easier, things like that. Nicer atmosphere when you've got the smell solvent. You said that oil was Yeah. So we couldn't use actual oil in the bottles here because of yeah. the smell. Yeah. Still, you can, you, you can, can use them. Leave for a start. I know no, she might leave. But, <laughs> and, and we have no, got people that do use them. So if everybody was using solvent, it would Yeah. So in general, I prefer, in this environment, yeah, I, I prefer agree. this. But some of my students, you know, find the, I mean, I find these slightly more fluid. And, or, or some people have just got these already. So, you know. And we've got, we've got students that do use the traditional oils and use a, a low odour solvent. Um, um, and it seems yeah, to be quite. Oil paints, oil paints, actually quite low odour paints. Right? Not any lower than that. I mean, they, they can, basically it's vegetable oil. So, what you smell, when you open this up, it's, veg, it's linseed oil, it's vegetable oil. Um, that's as low odour as it would go in, really. I mean, you could just um, mix the paint, not you. I mean, there are some artists that use these, but don't use solvents. They just use the paint out the tube. If they thin it, maybe they thin it with a little bit of linseed oil, but mostly just use it straight out of the tube and just use it a little bit thicker. So, so sorry, but what do you use? Just so straight, you wouldn't have four to You can do, yeah. With water can. mixables, you can do. If you want to thin them a little bit, yeah. or really washing your brushes, that's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's where you can need it more than anything. Um, so, if, you're, if you've got the traditional oils, you, in this environment, like our environment, we need to have a low odour solvent, and it needs to be a good quality one. I had somebody turned up the other day, and she, put, and she got one from, from an art shop, but it was like a cheap one from a, that they do in the hardware shops, and it just really does just smell quite bad. So, like these ones, this costs me about online, this costs me about 12, 14 pounds a litre. It's quite expensive, um, but I do keep recycling this. I use all of this up, but none of it gets thrown away. So I keep recycling it. So that lasts me a few months for any one of those. Um, but yeah, as I say, in this environment, I can't really have the, the cheaper sort of hardware shop, you know, white spirits or low odor white spirits, because it, it just makes it too smelly. And, I get headaches. To be honest. That's why, like 15 or 20 years ago. Well, yeah, and again, this way, we don't really want to have the windows too much either. So, there's quite a few of us here. Um, so, yeah, for that reason, yeah, yeah that, that's the sort of pros and cons of the different ones. Yeah. But today, I thought I'd, I'd show you the, the, the traditional ones. Well, because well, because I normally show you those, I thought I'd show you these. There's not fast. What are you going to do? Well, that applies to acrylic as well. No, no, to totally. Well, the, the actual painting method, yeah. you can just do that. With, well, you can sort of do it with acrylic. You might have, yeah, you see, see, I'll show you as we go. Acrylics uh, are basically, you've got the dry pigment and plastic. Yeah. So that, that's the difference. It's a plastic and they're much quicker drying. So they'll dry. Really. And you thin them out with water? Or you thin them out with water, yeah. yeah. Have you slowed down the drying of acry acrylics? 
you can yeah you can put um, retarding mediums in that will slow down the, the drying. The only the only trouble with that is it thins the paint quite a bit and it doesn't cover so well. So yeah, you might find having to use more and more acrylic. So it depends how good your paints are in the first place. If you've got like student quality paints that haven't got that much pigment anyway, and then you're then putting a, a retarder, it's then even thinner. Um, but yeah, you can do it, yeah. And, and actually using the acrylic mediums, I find, slows down the drying a bit as well. It's just kind of getting used to the process of them. Really. Um, so I thought I'd used a little bit of still life. So I've got a few objects here. Um, so what I suggest for these exercises, either still life or something like a simple landscape, I went through the landscape and I'm trying to keep the simpler ones in this, this folder because they, they do get more and more complicated. But I'm just thinking, you know, don't make life too difficult. Just, you know, if, you, if you're on a landscape, maybe just a tree, a bit of sky and some grass or something. Um, or still life, a couple of sort of fairly simple objects. Um, this approach I'm going to show you is, it's a bit like, I've got a few examples of portraits here, just in these two. Well, what I've done is I've, I've just um, put a load of paint on the board and wiped it in and then wiped some bits back and then painted some slightly darker bits in. So that was one of the photo, that's one I did from one way. Um, and I thought I'd do the same with, with the still life. And what I'm thinking is, I can then maybe next week or then, but this can be like the undercoat. Like if you're painting a house, you might do an undercoat and then you might go over the top coat. So if you're painting a drawer, a door, brown for instance, um, if it's white to start with, you, you perhaps need like a grey undercoat, otherwise the white is just going to show through and you need so many layers of, of the brown, it just wouldn't cover. So this gives you the undercoat. You'll find that the white, white page, it, the white will really show through if you don't put something on it down to start with. Okay, so that's my intention here. Um, so I've got a little bit of brown and blue. Um, now with, with oil paint, this is um, just a bit of medium left. I'm thinking, well, I can probably just use that to stain the, stain the, the canvas. Let's see. No, it needs to be a bit more than that. I'll mix something. So yeah, just a little bit of brown and blue. Um, so this is just low odor solvent. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. So you, I'm using extended paint, just like you'd use water with the water mixables or with watercolors. Um, just want to get some color down. Thin that out a little bit. Um, and the brown and blue makes quite a nice sort of neutral greyish tone. Do that for all over the paint, no matter what colour is going to go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just under coat, um, and then I'm just leaving that out a little bit rag. I don't want it too wet, um, so I can just kind of give that a nice and low ball. Otherwise, this is so bright; it's like staring into car headlights. It's so bright to work. <laughs> So if you haven't got a, if you've got a tone board already, you wouldn't need to do that. But if you've uh, just got a white, I suggest just getting getting that a little bit tone. Now we work, what you need to work on with oil paints is something that's been primed with something. So this will probably have some sort of acrylic primer on it. We can get like gesso, so something that's primed. The boards you buy, the canvas boards you buy are already primed, canvas is already primed. If you make your own surfaces, you'll need to prime it. Um, if you've got paper, if you, want, you can paint, paint on cardboard or paper, but it works a lot better if it's got some, some sort of acrylic primer on it. And I'll talk a bit more about the surfaces in another session, but just to get excited. So what I've got here is, on this table, I've got some rolls of um, bits of canvas. Um, if you want a bit of this canvas, just cut yourself a little bit off. But um, 
But so we were talking about paper earlier, weren't we? And well, you can use paper. One of the students used paper last week and she found it very, very absorbent. It just really sucks the paint in. So it's not that nice to use oils on there. Yeah. Um, so now I've got that, I can just sketch out my, my little stick still life here. So I'm thinking the bottle's going to go about here. So as it got to shops and did a bit of shopping before I came, so there's a, a few bits in here. Um, there's all sorts of uh, goodies in here if you want to paint it. So you were cooking this lunch? <laughs> <laughs> My wife is complaining there's no onions in the fridge this morning. Right, so that's, that's where the, the bottle goes, and then the. Um, it's just been called beetroot. That's the other. That goes about there. It's like a pomegranate. Well, that's a pomegranate. Yeah. Oh, right, big one. Right. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. Well, the, the, the nice thing about still life is it's drawing from life, um, and you get to do a little bit of composing as well, rather than just copy one of my photos that I've, I've already composed, and um, you get to try your own setup and get create something that's a bit more of your own. And I picked three three items is quite good um, in, from a design point of view, and three items that are slightly different sizes is good too. Um, that can work quite nicely. So you get a nice, sort of reasonably balanced composition. Um, on top of this, uh, pomegranate is back there. So that, that's enough as a line drawing. And I might think, well, actually, probably the other thing I can have a look at here is that I can look at next is shadows. We've got the stalk that's coming out about there. If I make mistakes, I can just wipe back with a dry brush or a bit of rag. Bring that back a little bit. Um, or just a tiny bit. Sometimes I'll get a bit. If I want to wipe that out, for instance, a little bit of salt and brush, and just get rid of it. So that's the nice thing about oils. Whereas acrylics, that will dry instantly. So that might be more of a problem with acrylics. You might find that it dries very quickly. Um, this gives you a bit more work working time. A lot more working time with oils. Acrylics, however, you can just keep building up the layers. You could dry, you know, you can obliterate what's underneath. I think I'll probably end into my picture about there. That perhaps be a good, almost like a square. That'll do. Um, so from that, from there, I can then start to make like a, a little tonal painting. So I can see a little bit of shadow across here. Um, we've got some shadows under here. Keeping the paint reasonably thin at this stage and thinning it down with um, solvent. So finally, just under here, I'll get a lot of shadow. This is all a little bit. Keep that thin just a bit. That can be beetroot. And it's really looking at how light and dark the different bits are. So I'll just soften it out a little bit. And then the <coughs> this is even darker here, so actually never a light that anymore. That can go quite dark. And I'd be more concerned about going too light than too dark. If it goes a bit too dark, it doesn't really matter. You can light that up. Um, next week I'll put a little bit of colour on this. Um, and then the, another important thing is we've got some shadows underneath, so make that really dark there. <coughs> and then a sort of light shadow here. And I, I can then sort of carry on doing the same with the bottle and with the, the beetroot. I know there's a bit more to it than that. But... 
Is that does that make sense? Yeah. So if, if anyone wants to try that, if you want to try any of the traditional oils, the water mixable oils, I've got a little bit of each if you want to try those. Um, or if you've got your own, or if you need to borrow a bit of solvent, I've got a couple of jam jar. So with, with the solvent, as I say, I keep reusing this. So this, this I don't know if this was mine or somebody else's. Yeah, I can't tell. It smells a little bit strong. Um, yeah, that definitely does smell as bad. Um, I, I just, uh, what I do is I'll wash my brushes in this. I'll let, I'll then sort of tip this into another jar and I'll just let all the paint settle. I'll show you a bit more about this another week. And then I can then, once the paint's settled, I can tip this back out into a clean jar. So it is a bit of a hack. It does take a bit of time. You know, I spend quite a lot of time at home just cleaning jars out and cleaning, you know. But, it, you know, if you want to work with the traditional, well, that's what you need to do. I know you're going to get to it, but when, when do you dispose of that liquid? What point do you get to before you get the... I never dispose of the liquid. You never dispose no. of it. <laughs> the liquid just gets, evo do, get evaporates, to be honest. Yeah, and, and what I do do is like I wash my brush here and wipe it. Probably like if I wash my brush, I usually wipe it on a rag. You know, I wash it and do that, and then a lot of that will probably then just evaporate. Um, what I do end up with is, which I've got a few big jars at home that just full of paint, and I'll probably at some point I'll, I'll let those evaporate, just chuck the jars. But I haven't bothered doing that yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. Any any other questions? You're all good to go. Paul, right. how do you get the tops off of the papers? All my papers. All right. I've got some pliers. I'll come doing it. Yeah. <laughs>